Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to show you a socket grafting technique called the ice cream cone technique. It's basically when you take your membrane and you cut it into the shape of an ice cream cone and then use that to hold your membrane or to hold your, your graft in place. So here's how you do it. So first I'm just getting the patient numb. I applied some topical and now I'm just going around the, um, around the tooth to be extracted, uh, doing small local infiltrations with septicane. So I'm just going to use this periosteal elevator just to kind of go around this, this uh, little root tip that remains just to loosen the soft tissue. And I'm also applying a little bit of pressure to try to dislodge this, um, this root tip also. So it's looking pretty loose. So I think I'm, I am just going to be able to just, to, um, just use this instrument to, to knock it out, really. So I'm just going to... Um, so I'm just gonna grab it with this forcep, this little root tip forcep, and just wiggle the heck out of it till it comes out. So if you guys don't have a set of root tip forceps, I really like these. I got these on salvin.com, and just by having a, a set of forceps with really small, uh, really small tips, it really helps a ton with uh, with extracting these root tips after they become loose. So you can see I, I got it loose, and tooth is out now. And now I'm going to get ready to, um, to just to bride the socket. I'm going to irrigate it with some saline, make sure it's really clean and that no infected periapical tissue is left, no granulation tissue is left. And I also use this time as an opportunity to see if there's any dehiscence in the buckle wall. So I'm checking if there's a little window um, of communication between the socket and the, the outside tissue. And so if there is a dehiscence, um, that's a perfect candidate for the ice cream, uh, ice cream cone technique of, uh, of, like, of membrane placing, of, um, of socket grafting. So it, it's not going to work well if the, entire, if the entire wall is missing. So if the entire wall is missing, then you might need to do some, um, some more extensive uh, GBR techniques. But if there's a, just a small dehiscence where the, uh, where, like, the periapical infection went through, then you can use this ice cream, um, ice cream cone technique. So now that my socket is all cleaned out, I take my, my little membrane, the little rectangular membrane, and cut it into the shape of a little ice cream cone. So before the membrane gets wet, it's really easy to, um, to manipulate. It's got the consistency of like some construction paper. And so I like to do all my manipulation on it before I put it, before I get it wet. And at the same time, I'm gonna run a suture through the, uh, the bigger portion of the, the membrane. So putting the, the, the suture in right now makes it a lot easier for me so I don't have to manipulate it and I don't push my membrane accidentally out of the way once it's in the mouth. So now I just try my membrane in and I make sure it's the, it's the right shape. And if it's too big, I'll just, I'll pull it out right now and I'll trim it up a little bit more. But if it's the right size, if it's the right size, I'm gonna make sure that the tip of the ice cream cone goes all the way down to the socket, so that it's past the um, past the dehiscence. And now I'm gonna take my bone syringe to carry my um, my corticocancellous mix of bone and just shoot it into the the socket. So remember, I've been hydrating this bone since the procedure started. So this bone's already hydrated for like 15 minutes. And now I just take a little bone condenser and I pack it into the socket. And so that, that fills the socket, but it also helps hold my membrane in place because it's putting pressure on, on, the, um, on the membrane. It's kind of pinning it against that wall. So I'm putting a lot of pressure there. And here I'm just giving him a little bit of extra anesthetic on the lingual. Uh, gingival tissue just because I'm going to be suturing there and I don't want him to be be sensitive All right, so now I'm gonna fill in a little bit extra bone because now I've created a little void because I pushed I like packed that bone um, Maybe about like so it's three-fourths filling the socket So now I'm gonna add a little bit more bone and push it with the condenser I like to pack it really tight 
but um, I'm making sure that the bone is going in, that it's it's still wet and that it's it's got blood on it, right? I don't want to uh, to I don't want it to go in dry. Uh, I don't want I don't want it to cause him dry socket either. I, I used to go with like a two by two and and push it down uh, into the socket with a with a two by two gauze, uh, but then I, I had some cases where it, they had um, they had symptoms of dry socket. So now I just I make sure the bone's always wet, always bloody, and I push it down with my condenser. Now I'm just taking the suture and I'm placing it through that lingual tissue. And I'm just gonna pass it through there and that just helps, that pins down that side of the membrane that we, uh, that we attached the, um, the suture to. I'm just using these these little um, adsin and forceps just to kind of reposition my my flap or sorry my membrane just to make sure it's going to cover the the entire socket. And now I'm going to place one interrupted knot right here, one um, just regular surgeon's knot, just pinning it to the lingual side right there. I'm going to do double one way, double the other way, and then one one way and then one the other way and you can leave it like that um, you can also go ahead and do um, do another suture so you can do like a like a figure x over it or you can you can do like interrupted uh, going diagonally one way and then interrupted going diagonally the other way and that should hold it in, in place nicely Now I'm gonna grab one more portion of the membrane. I'm grabbing the, uh, just like the corner on the lingual, just to tack it down. And so this part sometimes can dislodge your membrane. So you gotta be real careful. You've already got it pinned down on the facial. You got it pinned down now on the lingual. And I'm just tucking in that corner and pinning that down too. So I passed it through the membrane. Now I'm gonna pass it through the lingual tissue. And that helps really just really secure it in place. So the use of a membrane is, uh, I guess it's somewhat controversial. Um, a lot of people ask if you use, if you do soccer graft, do you have to use a membrane? Or if you use a membrane, do you have to use graft? And there's, there's a lot of studies that point one way or another. But um, I figure if it doesn't hurt, and um, if it makes me feel better about, um, about the graft being contained, and this, um, this, this particular technique is uh, pretty predictable for me, then I'll go ahead and, and do it this way. And I feel like I'm getting a better outcome, especially with cases that I'm not uh, getting primary stability, I'm leaving it exposed a little bit. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite corner. All right, so basically there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. There's uh, using membranes, not using membranes, uh, getting primary closure, resorbable, non-resorbable, a lot of different tools to use. This is just one of them uh, that I particularly like, so use it as you see fit.